Okay, this is the video that I'm doing just to show um, how I created that image which had the multiple bootable um, OS's on it. And so basically to do that, first thing I did is um, I, was, I did this setup in a virtual machine. So what I did is at first was to create a blank image um, and then I attach that blank image to the virtual machine. Um, and then as, as a sort of USB, um, USB disk. And so basically once I go into Windows, that USB, well actually it won't show up on here, um, because yeah, she needs to be formatting. And so the way you do that is just go into so go into disk management. And once you go in there, you get the message because it obviously detects that it's the disk is blank. And then you basically have to um if you just give it a volume just so it shows up in the in the actual program that um yeah, just format it um okay so that drives there and so now what we basically need to do next is to go to um Right, so basically you go into the search and do a search for win setup USB no, it's win setup from Right, and then you should um if you avoid all the adverts, because they're just there for no reason. And basically, if you go to win setup from USB.com, and then here you can find the download. So the latest one is 1.8. So if you just download that, and just ignore any adverts that come up. Okay, yeah, so just make sure it's this blue download button, so you have to try and ignore all the others. And just save it. Okay, so that's finished. So now if you find where it's downloaded to and then just run it, of course it's an unknown publisher, so that's why I'm running it in a virtual machine. That's probably the safest uh, place to run it. But then you could just because they didn't want to pay Microsoft for the, for the certificate. Okay, so if you open the extracted file, then... If you've got a 64-bit machine like this virtual machine is, then just run the 64-bit one. And then accept that the unknown publisher gets to run on your machine. And so now, because it's it's blank at the moment, what you do is select that you want to auto-format it. And basically, if, if you're going to, if you don't care about UEFI and you want to install anything which is Windows 2000 XP or 2003, then you're better off going for NTFS because uh, I've experienced this as well. That if you have it as FAT32, these, the setup part of these particular installations will be really slow. 
Um, so, I mean, the only reason you need EFI really is if you're going to be running a hard drive more than two terabytes as your boot disk. So if you're not going to do that, then you don't really need it. And you can still just boot your hardware in legacy mode. And, um, okay, so now when it comes to the setup, the other thing that is important is that if you have any, if you're installing any, um, setup files, which is from the 2000 or basically the NT4, sorry, the NT5 series, um, they actually aren't ISO based. So what happens is you have to point it to the extracted files. And the thing about when you do that with this program is that it's really slow. So the best thing to do, what you should do is all the other ISOs that you're going to add, it's best to add them first and then do this one last. Because what happens is each of these that you add, you can only add them one at a time. So at the moment, so if you see, I've got Vista, Windows 7 and Windows Server. Now, all three of these are NT6 based. So you can't put all three of them into here in one go. So what you basically, the best thing to do is to select the first one you're going to do. And your best bet is go for the smallest one. So that's the Windows 7. Yeah, see, it's just telling you that you need fat for UEFI. But then, of course, your NT5 setup is going to be slow. So you have to decide at the beginning what, how, what the priority is. Whether you care about UEFI or if you're going to be installing. Yeah, so as I was trying to say, whether you care about UEFI or if you just want to be installing onto hard disks which are two terabytes or less in which case you don't need it because UEFI is only for if you want to boot from a large hard disk yeah I think I'm just pointing out that the you got to do a similar thing with Ubuntu and CentOS as well. Okay, yes, yeah, so it's just saying it's going to do the f format now. So it's going to format it first and then copy the ISO onto it. Okay, so that first one's copying. So now we're going to go to get the next, the next size up, which is the Vista one, and making sure we don't select the auto format. Okay, so we just open up the. Vista now. Let me make sure no, no format options selected, so our efforts aren't wasted. No, also at the bottom left, it tells you how much is used of it. So basically, there's 3.6 gigs used. So far. Oh, actually, no, I was slightly wrong there. It was 2. 2.6 was used, so 3.6 is the size of the selection. Okay, 
Okay, so the Vista's finished now. And so notice, bottom left tells you you've got 8 gigs left. So that's how you can tell um, how much space. So finally we select the, uh, the Windows. Alright, yeah, not, so we're not finished yet. This is the Windows 7 PE, um, ISO. Yeah, so I'm just showing this is this, so if 2.4 gigs is the size and there's 8 gigs left. So that's how you can tell if you still have enough left on that, um, the USB. Okay, so that one's finished. So basically, now, um, so, so as you're saying, so you notice that you, the form auto format hasn't been selected for each of these. Um, and that's the important thing, because if you ever do that, then all the work you've done is wasted. Okay, so now with the, when you're doing Windows NT5, you have to actually select, so you have to mount the disk, and then you select the actual directory that you're going to use, um, and it's basically the i386 directory is what you select. So you just find where it's mounted by the system, and choose a directory, and then it'll appear in the list. So the next thing is the NT6 one, and so that last one is the, um, the server 2012. So just find where the ISO is located, and then Select that one. Yeah, see, so you've got 4.7 gigs selected and, and 5 is the amount you've got left. So you can only, so whatever you put on now, it has to be less than about 700 megabytes. So choose the, just the center is minimal. And just select the name that it's going to have in the bootloader. As you can see, it's 5.39 gigs, so you're right on the edge. So basically, that's it. Now it's full. And this is basically the long one because the, um, the, the Windows, the top one is 2000 XP and 2003 one. That's going to be the longest one. So that's why if you're going to put a load of stuff on, you should make sure that any, if you're going to have either Windows 2000 XP or 2003 as a, on your USB, do them last so that you can basically start it and then leave it running and then come back once it's finished. And well, that's what I'm going to do as well. Okay, so that's finished. 
So those are all done now, and right. So makes me nervous to give it a test because um, yeah, you can do it from within Windows, but since I'm already running it from a emulator. I'll just test it in there, so just shut this down. Okay, so now just gotta change the command so that the USB stick, because I've already done the test. Um, well, the easiest way is just get rid of the, the drive for the virtual machine. And then straight away it comes up. And so those are all the s different selectors you can choose from it. And so the top one has all the NT6. So, so that will have the um, the Vista and the 7, and then this is the Windows XP. So if you run that, so you can see that that's running okay. But you get a blue screen. And that's probably just a setting in the emulator they have to change. Okay, so if you try the, so you can choose the Windows 7 Vista or the PE or the Server 2012. So those are all the ones. That I loaded on. So you can see if the Vista is a bit more successful than XP, because that's what you find is that the NT6 ones, they seem to work a lot better on virtual machines. Okay, it looks like the, the Vista's got a problem as well. Oh, that's right, it's because it's a XHCI, yeah, so that's um, USB 3, which of course, yeah, well it tells you, isn't it? The Vista doesn't support USB 3, so that's something to, to remember. Okay, so then we try the next one. The same problem with Windows 7. Yeah, there you go. So same thing. So, so there you go. If you, if you try and plug it into a USB 3 only controller, then basically your Windows Vista and 7 are just not, they're not going to install. So you have to make sure it's USB 2. So 
Now we've got Tricerva 2012. So now this is Windows 8 now. So. Okay, so that seems to have started. So just a quick test to see if the installation part works. Yeah, so that seems okay. So obviously it's got USB 3 support. But what you'll find is that there's no actual drive. And there's no point in formatting your USB because that's that won't get you anything. So just gonna have to exit out of that. But it looks as if so Windows 8 and above is the, what you need for um, if you're going to be booting from a USB 3 only controller. Okay, so just quick test of the center is seven minimal. It seems like it's not too happy. Yeah, okay, this is just the Windows seven. So yeah, P that ISO that I created that boots pretty quick. Yeah, so basically that's just a Windows Seven. So it's like the bot. P, which is for Windows XP, and looks like that's running okay. Yeah, so these are just some of the things I installed into that ISO and basically it's just the ISO that comes in handy for if you have something wrong with a Windows machine and you need to boot from a external of some kind and then run as uh, utilities on it and there's a lot more stuff you can install onto it but I was just mainly checking to see that it was working okay Okay, so basically that's the um, uh, sort of short test of that Win setup from USB. And yeah, if you have a, a few Windows machines you have to look after, it certainly comes in handy to be able to have all of those images on one USB disk. Um, and also, if you do it in a virtual machine, the convenient thing about it is that you can use that to save on the installation time by having it right into a hard disk. And then at the end, you just get that whole big image that you've created and just write it straight onto the um, USB drive. Okay, so I'll see you.